The end of this age is at hand. Everything around us, everything that we know is about to change. And this change is going to be radical, like nothing that we've ever experienced before. But as in all times of great change, this shift offers us an opportunity to look deep within ourselves and think about who we are, the way we relate to the earth, and to the people around us. 2012 end date of the Maya Long Count calendar is uh, a subject that's been looked at for many years. And for me, back in the late 80s, early 90s, I realized there was a great unsolved mystery. Why did the Maya place the end of their calendar in 2012? One thing that was very clear is that it is an accurate winter solstice. So to me, that meant that, well, probably there's a focus here on astronomy. And we know that the ancient Maya were astute stargazers and brilliant mathematicians and were advanced in ways that were just beginning to So what appreciate. they noticed, and this is what's unique about Mayan cosmology, they noticed that the December solstice sun was slowly shifting towards the bright band of the Milky Way that we can see if we go out, you know, camping in August, we can see the bright band of the Milky Way stretching overhead. And there's a very bright and wide part of the Milky Way uh, it's called the nuclear bulge. It lies between the constellations of uh, uh, Sagittarius and Scorpio. And it's visible to the naked eye. And the Maya thought of this as a very interesting part of the Milky Way. Well, in my research uh, into the 2012 end date, it became very clear to me that the Maya had intended that date to target an astronomical alignment, a very rare alignment of our sun on the solstice with the center of the galaxy. And uh, this is a, a kind of alignment that happens only once every 26,000 years. On my way from Denver, it was my good fortune to meet three elders of the Inca people. They had traveled all the way from the mountains of Peru to tell the world about the legend of Pachacuti. This was their prophecy about the end of time, which they said would occur around 2012. Their names are Don Francisco, Don Umberto, Doña Berna, and their friend Chino. Their words were translated into English by Marcella Griffith. They have come to give us this message, and they live at 18,000 feet in the Andes Mountains. And they are the descendants of the Incas, the children of the sun. And since those times, since the Incas, the coca leaves have been a sacred, a sacred leaf that give us the messages of nature. So they have been using these leaves since the times of the Incas um, as the messengers from the mother, from the earth, from nature. <laughs> Don Humberto says that in this life we need to share and live in community with no non being with no jealousy, not no competition, but united and sharing and not only sharing between us, in between the people, but sharing with the earth, sharing with the mountains. Doña Bernardina agrees that we have to live in community and unlike a family living in a house and sharing and live like a family. They are going to do a reading with the coca leaves. Uh, it's their custom to track destiny, to look into the future with coca leaves. They throw the coca leaves and the coca leaves will say what they're asking. He calls on the spirits of the mountains and the Pachamama, the earth, to tell us what she wants us to know. The prophecies talk about the Pacha Kuti. Pacha means earth and Kuti, the, return, the turnover, the renew, the renewal of life. So the new cycle of life that is coming to us. 
And according to the prophecies, this is happening in the next, it's already happening, but it has its completion as the new time to come in the next six years. The prophecies talks, uh, talk about the 2012, year 2012, and December 21st as the, as the date of when the time it's turned over to the, to the new race, to the new, to the fifth sun, to the new vibration of, of the light. This is a time of tremendous crisis in the world, but as any crisis brings us the, the opportunities, opportunities to, to, recre to reinvent who we are, to reinvent how we want the world and what world do we want to create for our children and our children's children? The Incas are the keepers of a body of wisdom that brings us the prophecies, but also the processes. And the processes has to do with the transmissions of the energy that is going to help us align with the new Inca, with the new homo luminous. These transmissions, the processes, are transmissions that help us align with who we are becoming, with the new, the new race that is not just a, the homo sapiens, but the homo luminous. And they bring us the, the gifts of these transmissions of energy that aligns us to that new, new human that is a homo luminous. After our conversation, Doña Berna blessed me. The feeling that came over me from this experience stayed with me for days. What a joy to meet such people, so grounded to the earth, so peaceful, wise, and knowing. The Incan elders know that what is really important in this world is us, our relationship to the earth and each other. Maybe the reason that we modern people surround ourselves with so many possessions is because we are not connected to each other anymore. We have begun to believe that it's our possessions that are important, so we have sacrificed our connection to each other.